Welcome back to another episode of Hookers TV and today we're going to be teaching you how to build a uh, boat motor stand holder wheeler thing out of a dolly. Alright guys, here's the stuff you're going to need. Uh, first, obviously, you're going to need the dolly. We got this one from Harbor Freight for 30 bucks. Uh, a nice big piece of wood that you can cut down to size. Uh, nice thick, it's a 2x10. Uh, this is some of the best wood we can find. Um, two pieces of channeled steel, uh, about four foot in length, just for support. Um, and then you're gonna need your nuts and bolts and all that. Uh, also, what we what you need is pipe fittings. Um, you take these, and this is when the top of the dolly is gonna be turned sideways. We'll talk about that in just a minute. And then you need. Some old metal, square scratch, anything you can find. We're using an old signpost that we bought off of somebody. Um, so we're going to cut that down to size and we'll show you guys what it looks like. I have a 9.8 Mercury outboard and I was not happy with the um, outboard stands that we had. So I decided to take a 600 pound dolly. It's a relatively cheap dolly, about $40 for the dolly. I cut the handle off with a pipe cutter and I basically welded some street L's in it with pipe in it and to turn the handle. And then what I'm going to do is get a piece of wood and mount it here and then drill the holes into it so that it will hold the engine or the motor and then from that I'm building the base out of some old angle I had laying around and then from that I went and I built some bracing to go on here. And this also doubles as your gas can, as I will illustrate. This also doubles as your gas can holder. So you can put your engine and your gas can together. Basically, when I get everything welded together, it'll be like that. And then you put your motor on top of it. Everything I've seen out there was kind of chintzy, so. And I believe it'll hold up to probably at least a 30 horsepower motor from what I can see weight wise. After that, I probably would not go any heavier. Out of protest, I am not allowed to play any Johnny Cash on my radio, so I'm welding with no music, which I'm not happy about. But the whole purpose of this video is uh, I got tired of carrying this outboard motor to the uh, truck and it was constantly hurting my back, so now we have a dolly that will support the motor and I don't have to worry about it breaking if it should fall off the wooden uh, engine holes. The old motor stand we had, as you can see, <laughs> it's cracked, piece of junk. Screws coming out of it, we were just afraid the motor was going to break off of it. It's ready to be welded in. All I have to do is square it, make sure everything is square where I want it. So I'll take a couple measurements. Building the foundation, basically to hold the weight of the motor. I want it to be as square as possible. I just kind of put a square on there and see where I'm at. It looks pretty good. Same thing on the other side, square it up. That looks 
good. I'll take a tape measure just to double check. I have like 15 and a quarter to the outside of my tubing. 15 and a quarter at this side. We're looking good. And our end piece is also 15 and a quarter. <coughs> it's ready to be tack welded in. And then I will add one more brace across here. It'll be about 12 and a half inches just so when you put your gas tank in there it has a little more support for it. But I go out my length on my structure is about 21 inches overall. That'll keep the dolly from flipping over with the weight of the outboard motor on it. And um, then I'll have to add my angle pieces here to it. Got these at Tractor Supply. They're just square and they weld real nice onto that. And that keeps your 90 degrees and your flex point from happening. You have a lot of structure there to hold the weight. Here's going to be a little added support for the gas can so that it doesn't fall out of the bracket if you're bouncing it around. Next is just tack weld everything in place and double check to make sure everything's fairly square and then add this piece of metal here Normally I wouldn't do a project like this with a TIG welder. I would use a MIG welder with uh, 6011 wire, but since this is all I have is a TIG welder, uh, this is what we're going to weld it with. I'm going to weld the uh, braces on the added support from the base to the dolly. Um, As you can see, the gas can fits in there. It'll fit a five gallon gas can and a three gallon gas can. And one thing to note through experience is I always round all these edges really nice. Um, and that's so that I don't hit myself or kick it and cut my leg. I like to have everything rounded nice. Basically what we're gonna do here is we have to take and measure from here, level it up. We're going to drill and put two 5 16 screws with fender washers on the outside, uh, which is going to hold a bent piece of stainless steel that I add over top of the 2 by 10 And that stainless steel just adds added support to the 2 by 10 in case it were to weaken for some reason if you had a really heavy motor. And it doesn't allow the clamps to dig in.
center punching it just so I can get the drill to start. From the first brace that I use, I like to go seven and three quarters of an inch to the bottom of the piece of wood on both sides. And then from the side to the end of the wood is about four and three sixteenths push in. Level the top. It doesn't have to be perfect. That looks good. Roughly inch and a half apart. Steel that I was talking about so that the clamps go on the back, it reinforces the wood. I use fender flare, washer. Fender washers that I got at Tractor Supply, and it actually is held in place by the washers, and that's the added support. You could drill and put a couple screws on the other side if it would make you feel more comfortable. I have done it in the past, sometimes I don't. It does a nice job with the uh, washers holding everything into place, kind of tightens down on it. As you can see, Five sixteenths bolts and they're three and a half inches in length. Three and a quarter would be better, but Tractor Supply doesn't sell three and a quarter. The step that I do is I usually take the stainless steel plate back off and then I paint it with enamel paint of whatever your choice uh, color. Well, I'm just going with glossy black because that's what we have and the Mercury motor is black. Uh, and then I'll put this stainless steel back on after we're done painting and then it'll be done. That's it. You have a nice motor hauler and uh, it will hold your gas can. The second step to this motor stand building process is just adding paint to it. Whatever color you want. My dad chose a semi-gloss black. It's what we had. So I'm just going to put two coats of Rust-Oleum brand paint and it'll come out looking pretty nice. I got one in the back over there. All right, the uh, motor stand is finally painted. Next step is just put the metal back on it and we'll call it a day.
through the stainless steel and then I don't go into the wood, I go in with a pilot drill. That way when I run my screw in, I don't split the wood. And I move the clamp over to the other hole just to pull everything tight down against the 2x4 or 2x8, 10, whatever we cut. That's it, that's the last step, take the clamp off. I always check the air pressure in the tires. They're a little low, so I'm gonna fill them up and then I'm gonna put the motor on it in the gas tank. This is what we started with. As you can see, we have every clamp, screw, piece of blue rope holding it together. This is the way I got it. And uh, this is the new motor stands that I've come up with. I hope you enjoy the video. Peace out.